welcome to Digital Podcaster. My name is Dylan Schmidt. You are listening to Digital Podcaster, obviously. And obviously, I didn't rehearse that before saying that. <laughs> uh, every time I feel like I say something a little bit different. Today on the podcast, I want to talk to you. I want to talk not to you. I don't want to talk at you. This is a one-way conversation, and I want to make it a two-way. But one of the ways I can do that is by asking you to send me an email. And this isn't an ad because and in this episode, I'm talking about how you could get more email subscribers. And I want to talk more tact, tactful, tactfully? No. I want to talk more, uh, not so philosophical, so much idea-based today. I want to give you some, there's, there's a word I'm missing, tactful, tactful? There's a word. There's a word that's right there. I want to talk to you about getting more email subscribers, and I'm not going to use any fancy words because I can't even think of them right now. People all the time when social media goes down will say all the time when social media that goes down like once, once a year, maybe, I don't know when something messes up, people go, you need to build your email list. You need to build your email list. I have not been one to shout that just yet, but Facebook was down a few months ago and people were just like, ah, now you got to build your email list. So people right after were like scrambling to build their email list. And they thought, you know, they realized you, when something like that happens, I'm in Los Angeles, just like if an earthquake happens, people go, oh, I should have been preparing for an earthquake. Well, the best time to prepare for an earthquake is not after the earthquake happens. It's when you can, like right now, when you can, uh, as soon as you can without, you know, you might have an inconvenience of, I got to go to the store, but that's a way better inconvenience of going to the store and getting non-perishable foods, and making a little pack than it is dealing with the aftermath, you know? Um, so Similar, you know, using a dramatic example here, lives are not, hopefully, um, on the line when we talk about email, but I'm using a strong example here. So getting more email subscribers, people will get really amped up, but usually only until it's too late when they need to do something. So the best time to build an email list is not when you need an email list. You meet with the consultant like myself and they go, oh, awesome. How big is your email list? And you go, Nobody, you could start building it today and you don't have to wait. You don't need any certain number of social media followers. You don't need to have some breakthrough in your content. You don't need to do anything other than what I'm going to lay out for you here. Because let's face it, getting email subscribers is cool if you do something with it. And if you're doing nothing with it, then you're probably like, well, I don't even know why I would need it. So real quick, I want to talk about why you might need it or why you might want it. Why you might We'll just move the want and need. We'll blur that line. Why you, I would suggest having email subscribers is it gives you a closer uh, reach to the people that you're talking with. And this is especially helpful if you if you have a huge audience, then you would outsource that reach, right? It wouldn't be a direct line of like, and I'm saying huge audience of like, um, well, it's hard to put into words. If your email list, or your email subscriber subscriber list was rather larger, then it would make sense at that point, you'd probably just outsource the help. So it wouldn't be people emailing you directly into your inbox. Uh, and you can set up a, you know, anyone can set up a free Gmail account to use. Um, and also a, a Google domain is 12 bucks a year. So you can get your, you know, domain name cheap. And, you know, so yeah, so as far as being worried that people would email you, I don't want you to be worried about that uh, because that's just not, you You know, you can set those boundaries. We don't want to get so ahead of ourselves here. And why you might want to uh, email someone is, is, or have someone give you the ability to email you or tell them stuff is because you want to be able to have that conversation, that, that two-way street. Right now it's a one-way street. If we looked at this podcast and it was only me talking to you and there was no email I gave you, there'd be no way for me to get any feedback or anything like that. It'd be a one-way street. And I think it's smart for people to have email lists because there's multiple reasons. It's not just to sell somebody something. It's to get feedback. You can't get great feedback through social media comments. It's just not the place to get them. People will say nice. It's ah, kind of polarizing. It's not the place where you will get like real good messages. And people will say, oh, on social media, there's just too much distraction. I've been in this for too long to know that the distraction on social media is so much stronger than an email. An email 
There's something more focused about it. Even if the person has 80,000 unread messages in their email inbox that's sending you an email, the amount of time it takes them to send the email, there's something more personal about it. And it's not, it's different than a, a direct message, even a text message, honestly. People just take a little bit longer with an email. And that's what you want because you know that you got a little bit more good feedback from there. Also, I'll say real quick, the quality of your feedback depends on you know, the quality of question you ask too. So if you don't ask a specific question when you're asking for feedback, you're not going to get a specific, uh, you know, your input has got a, a quality input will, will give you a quality output. So make sure the person that you're speaking to, to get the feedback from has got to be quality. Just got to throw that out there. Feels in my obligation as your guide. <laughs> um, and with this being said, Email just makes everything easier. So how do you do it? People will not just give you their email address. I'll, I'll say this better. People at scale will not just give you their email address that don't really know you. If you've built up a relationship with them, it's much, much easier to just have the relationship because you have something there. They have a common history of you. And it would be like asking a friend, hey, what's your email? I why do, yeah, what are you sending me? That's all, there's an assumption that you're sending me something. Oh, I'm just going to send you a bunch of ads. No, that's not what you want to do. Unless you're a business that just sells ads or something like that, then that makes sense. Uh, or not sells ads, but like you sell a specific product. But generally speaking, that, that's not the type of people that are coming to me for the most part. So you would, what, you'd get their email, you'd send them nice messages regularly. You'd keep in touch with them in that way. You give them something cool you saw, you share things with them, whether that's from yourself or things you saw on the internet. Like, I know, I don't know it too well, but Tim Ferriss, the author, speaker, uh, author of 4-Hour Workweek, has something called like a 5-Bullet Friday, and he sends a bullet point thing, five bullet points every Friday about something. Same idea, but breaking, breaking it down for you, it's just sharing, you know, you either share something from your personal life it's like sending an email to a friend. You want to make email personable, personal. And so how you get their emails though at scale, people's emails at scale is by giving them something in exchange because they don't know you yet. You have to give them something. And this is commonly called a lead magnet, which means the person that you're attracting to your email list to be in your world is you're giving the, it's something that's magnetizing them. You're giving them something in exchange. An example of this would be on digital podcaster. I have 365 podcast titles. It's a download. It's like a 19 page download of 365 podcast titles. People who have any interest in a podcast are interested in titles uh, because titles make or break a podcast episode. Um, you could spend all the time. You could interview amazing people. If the title isn't good, people will not listen. That's a fact. And I went through the work for myself. And then I was like, oh, this makes sense to just give away as, as a lead magnet of people that are interested in that. They're probably also interested in learning podcasting or something like that. Because I have a business, digital podcasters slash having the podcasting academy. I have a financial, a business incentive there to, to do that. But you might be listening to and you might be like, well, I don't really have a audience in that way. Like, I'm not really sure what I'd be selling. I just, you know, just trying to have an email newsletter because I feel like I need one. Well, yes, that's probably still true. And I, while I wouldn't necessarily call it a lead magnet if you weren't in a business sense, I would still operate under that same idea. Because you can take the cool thing about digital marketing is you can take the ideas and make them mold, mix and match in different ways. And how that would look like for a, say you had a relationship advice podcast where people share emotional stories or something like that, how you might do that is um, outsourcing. Again, not everything has to be from you. You don't have to be the main teacher. You don't have to be the, the person giving advice. I have so much uh, experience in this area that it's how I can share all this in this podcast is because I have like data and years of doing this, that that's how I can share this. But if I didn't, and I was having more interviews on my podcast, or it was more stories about something else, I could still have a uh, one thing I could have someone make something and then whip it up and then 
give that in exchange for email addresses. Because if you're thinking like, if someone's going to give you their email address, you want them to be interested in more of what you're doing because you're going to be reaching out to them, sending emails like a friend. So you got to give them something, right? Like if, if no one knows you, they're just going to be like, oh yeah, I take my email address. It's like if you went to a business and they had a little sheet on it and it said, enter your uh, email for updates. That's not going to be that strong. But if, if they say, enter your email and get selected for 25% off uh, whatever the next thing is, you're more likely going to be like, oh, actually, okay. You're going to give it in exchange for that discount. So that's how much you you kind of work the value there. And the same thing, no matter what kind of thing that you're you're trying to exchange here for your podcast or your content, whatever it is that you're trying to get more emails subscribers for, is like give them something in exchange. That could be like a cool little art download. If you had that relationship podcast I'm talking about, you might have someone put together like a cool little ebook thing. Like if you had people that you were um, having on your po- your podcast was all about breakups, you could put together a list of the five best breakup books and a little journal or something, something that's digital and something that doesn't cost you a bunch to make or anything, but you could outsource on Fiverr or Upwork or reach out to someone of stuff that you like on Instagram or TikTok, and then have them help you make something that you want to give to your audience. And now you have their email. And what can you do with the email subscribers? You can let them know of upcoming episodes of cool content, things that are going on in your life things that you would want to share with uh, someone that you were wanting that is enjoying your content and they want more and you want to give them the opportunity to go deeper. And if you had like an example of the relationship podcast, if you, if we were using that as the example, it would not be in the best interest to then give something in exchange that's dealing with like soccer, right? You want to make it cool to your audience. You don't want to make it like, I just found this thing on my desktop and now I'm going to give it, you know, (laughs) obviously, but I just have to say that out loud because you want to make it cool and you want to make it be like, Ooh, I need this. And I'm going to give you my good email. I'm not going to give you that email that I, I put in there to just send any old spam to. And it's all a numbers game. Cause just like that thing at the restaurant where it says, leave your email and get updates. Very few people are going to put their email on that list. On the flip side, even no matter how cool the store is, very few people. On the flip side, if it says, like, leave your email here for 25% off on a future purchase, we'll email you a code. Especially if the store is cool, people are going to be giving their email. That won't be a problem. There won't be any friction there. And, uh, yeah, so that's something that people want, right? They're like, yes, cool. And I, I get more updates. You'll send me updates? Cool. They expect it. So... That's how you can get more email subscribers is by giving the person that is subscribing something. And people mess this up all the time when they just say, sign up for my newsletter and get updates. Like nobody just wants updates. Nobody does. We get enough updates. Every time I open up Facebook, TikTok's the worst at this. All all these social media apps are the worst at this. I'm like, I don't need any more updates. I don't need any more updates. I don't even need updates about your podcast. I don't need updates about your Instagram. Like there's just too much going on. There's too much noise. And I keep my inbox at zero. I don't keep anything hanging out in there. Um, I'll snooze it or delay it until it's time for me to focus on it. But notifications are so intrusive to the creative process and moving along with no, with less friction. Um, And I say that because it's not like you just want to create more noise in someone's life. You want to develop a relationship with the person that is subscribing through the email with you. you, And I'm not saying you need to then become friends with anybody. Like you just need to like manually write out emails, but you can use a service like MailChimp, which is free. And you can start sending a weekly email newsletter, even if it's very simple. You know, what's the, the simplest way to send an email? It's just like, what's one valuable thing I could share with my audience this week? And if you just answered that one question and then sent it through an email, you will develop your email list so solid and people will have built a relationship with you. And when it comes for you to launch something new or share something you're really excited about, the first place you'll think to go is sharing it with your email list because you've built a relationship there that's stronger than social media. And that's a really cool thing to have because you know that 
One, if they have a question, they can just email you back. Two, they opened up your email. They saw your email in their inbox amongst all those unread emails they have, and they go, you know what, I'm opening this up. You know what, at the bottom, when you said, uh, I would love if you would email me back for this, you know what, I, I'm going to email you back because of that. That is a beautiful thing, a cool thing. Um, so yeah, so that's how you can get more email subscribers. And it doesn't need a 10-point marketing strategy for it. You don't need some special framework. You just need something cool to give your email, uh, your 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 audience, in exchange for their email address, and you got to make it available. Like, no manual stuff here. We're talking about doing things at scale uh, and doing things that don't require like a one-to-one touch. So building an email list does not by any means mean manually taking emails. It means go to this website. For example, um, I think if you go to um, well, this URL might change in the future. I'm just going to say it, I guess. If you go to learn.podcastingacademy.com slash 365, it should show up (laughs) as the 365 podcast titles download. Um, And that's where I send people to download that. And that's where that is. That's, that's, That's what that is. And if you sign up for that, you'll see that I'm not just right off the bat, like, you know, give me your money or anything like that. There's like a real thing that because I can't one-to-one have a full-on relationship building conversation with this person and learn all of their deepest desires and interests and like actually cultivate with that, that with them, I send a sequence of emails that build that relationship for me, but they have a good idea of who I am, how I help people, why I do what I do in a way that's hopefully inspiring and encourages them to want to stick around in my world But at the end of the day, if they don't want to stick around and they want to unsubscribe, the unsubscribe button's there. And when you are manually taking things and you're sending out things, not only I believe that's illegal if you send it out through Gmail, but it is one of the most frustrating things to be on someone's email list. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, this is not right. I don't feel, I don't feel like good at all uh, about being on someone's email list and then there's no unsubscribe button. Um, But again, I think that's also illegal. And that's why you got to use things that are free, like MailChimp. And you can pay like even a little bit more to get more, um, uh, what do you call it, features and things like that. So growing your email list doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be a mystery to it. And the best thing to do, too, is just pick something that you think would be cool for your audience, invite them to uh, enter their name and email to get that thing, and then it automatically sends it to them, and then start regularly emailing them and and asking for feedback or sharing cool stuff just like you would a normal person you got to treat it like it's you know people get a little scared sometimes through email because they feel like they're maybe on stage they're like "Ooh, i'm talking to four people here you know and that can be nerve-wracking because you're like ah, it's only four people and then other times you're like whoa i feel really close to these people um it doesn't matter treat treat it like you would in any other conversation and just treat it the person you're speaking to with respect and, you know, don't don't be weird. Don't try to take advantage of anything. Just simply share something cool with them and keep nurturing that relationship. And you'll find that people will share your email. Your reputation as a whole online will build and they'll share the, the emails you send them with their friends and things will spread a different way, too, which people only look at social media these days with ways of spreading online. It's just not true. Email is still a great way to go. That's all I got for you in this episode about getting more email subscribers. I hope you enjoyed this. I already mentioned that 365 download. I'll, the link for that again is learn.podcastingacademy.com slash 365. It would mean the world to me if you would lead, leave a rating and review for the podcast. It goes a long ways on helping this podcast grow and reach more people and building more relationships and just growing and finding more cool people like yourself. Uh, so that would appreciate that. I hope you're having a great day. I will be back tomorrow with another episode for a podcast a day for the month of May. Talk to you soon.